till uh, regeneration uh, but then uh, i think i try to look up at what is expected uh, so as we just uh, had very good uh, talks by dr shrinivas and uh, dr yukoi and himanshu uh, we realize that ocular staining is very essential when we look at diagnosis of dry eye and as we saw we use various dyes to uh, look at the ocular surface and it's also very essential that the surface staining gives us some idea about the degree or severity of the dry eye uh, for example a very very mild dry eye will have no staining of the ocular surface and a very severe staining would be seen when you have a grade 3 or a grade 4 dry eye so uh, and based on the extent of staining it might also help us to decide what medications we might use for a given patient and therefore we might see some patients of dry eye who have extensive staining there may be other pathologies of uh, which cause dry eye where we don't see a significant amount of uh, ocular surface staining though we may still see a, a good number of uh, symptoms as regards to the patient uh, as shrinivas sh showed us we uh, often look at these erosions when we try to do uh, fluorescein staining and they could be very mild erosions uh, in the lower part of the cornea or in the interpalpebral area and then we could have very severe staining and uh, uh, large areas which are staining and even you can have uh, filaments which might be there so basically uh, we look at the ocular surface staining not only for diagnosis of dry eye we help it uh, it also helps us to grade the type of dry eye to decide what treatment Uh, we would like to use for a given patient of dry eye and then when we follow up this patient the ocular surface staining helps us to know uh, how is the uh, treatment uh, going on and how is the response to the medical treatment that we are doing in a given patient i was just wondering that uh, why do we get epithelial erosions in dry eye so some of the factors that came to my mind could be there could be mechanical factors by which i mean a frictional uh, loss Uh, which could be because the lubrication isn't adequate on the ocular surface or it can be sometimes because the epithelial surfaces have become roughened up or there is some keratin there could be neurotrophic factors we know that in dry eye there is a decrease in the subbasal nerve density and therefore these factors might slow down the epithelial recovery we could also have epithelial erosions because of inflammatory uh, cytokine induced damage to the ocular surface epithelium and we all know that uh, a lot of medications and preservatives may have toxic effects on the corneal epithelium and therefore give rise to ocular surface staining as of now despite a lot of research when it comes to treating Uh, dry eye very often we restrict ourselves to using lubricants lubricants and only lubricants we need to understand that uh, that's pretty palliative as one mentioned and they are they just sort of give a symptom type of relief uh, maybe a temporary symptomatic relief however they do not address many of the underlying mechanisms that are responsible for the dry eye pathology so if we need to address how we should look at treating epithelial problems or how we should improve the ocular surface uh, stain scores and uh, improve the patient symptomatology when it comes to a patient with dry eye i think we need to look at each mechanism and see how we could target so that the staining goes down and the patient is more comfortable and uh, feels better so if you are looking at mechanical uh, maybe uh, pathology then you could try to use a better lubricant and also use uh, something which can help the epithelial regeneration so that the recovery is faster if it look uh, if you look at neurotrophic factors maybe you need to look at mechanisms by which you can induce neural re regeneration and of course you will need to use anti inflammatory therapy so that you can target the inflammatory cytokines on the ocular surface and of course you need to avoid medications and preservatives which may be toxic to the ocular surface epithelium so whenever we talk of dry eye therapy we say well we need to reduce the inflammation on the ocular surface and on the uh, in the lacrimal glands 
uh, we try and aim to normalize the tear film and stimulate the healing of the epithelium on the ocular surface and improve the neural loops and feedbacks so as uh, shrinivas mentioned the corneal epithelium is a tight epithelium with uh, uh, glycocalyx on the surface and uh, we have tight junctions which is like a barrier effect and then we have the ocular surface is richly supplied by the subbasal nerve plexus in the cornea and we know that when we have a patient who has a chronic dry eye there is a loss of the uh, nerve uh, density and uh, it correlates with the ocular surface staining in these patients so what does really happen when there is a corneal epithelial breakdown in a given eye so whenever there is a corneal epithelial injury it probably uh, gives a afferent impulse in the corneal nerves which then releases certain uh, factors such as the nerve growth factor uh, substance p and the calcitonin gene related peptides and in the presence of uh, growth factors such as the epithelial growth factor and the tgf beta and several others there is a release of fibrin fibronectin and hyaluronic acid so there is an up regulation of pathways which lead to a production of fibronectin and hyaluronic acid which then form a temporary scaffold which helps the epithelial cells to slide over and heal the and bridge the defect so this temporary scaffold which forms activates the cells at the edge of the epithelial breakdown to rapidly spread over and it also sends signal to the transient amplifying in the limbal stem cells in case the, there is a significant epithelial breakdown so eventually there is epithelial sliding and regeneration and the surface does heal up so know that hyaluronic acid is important for ocular surface regeneration and it binds to the uh, cd44 receptor which is there in the corneal and the conjunctival ocular surface epithelium and this receptor tends to get upregulated whenever there is corneal injury and therefore uh, the hyaluronic acid plays a very important role in healing of the ocular surface so as i showed you in the earlier slide basically just to show the sequence of events the cell deficient site if it uh, is there it will then basically cause a uh, expression of fibronectin Uh, which then forms a sort of a matrix on which the cells can very quickly and easily slide and regenerate and we know that fibronectin is expressed in wounded corneas and it helps the epithelial healing as has been shown in several publications and once the epithelium does grow over the bare area it then moves vertically and uh, forms the five or the six layers of the epithelium and it also differentiates into the uh, various uh, type of cells that we see in the epithelium here we look at how does sodium hyaluronate really help the epithelial healing process so as we mentioned as i mentioned earlier hyaluronic acid and fibronectin and cd44 they are all over expressed whenever there is an epithelial injury so when we use exogenous uh, hyaluronic acid uh, as eye drops in a there is a basically binding of the hyaluronic acid to the fibronectin which is uh, laid down and this basically again increases the uh, way by which the epithelium can adhere and then cells can migrate rapidly in literature it has been shown very clearly that a fibronectin with a hyaluronic acid combination has a synergistic effect and it aids rapid epithelialization and if you use any agent by which you can block the fibronectin or the hyaluronic acid uh, uh, molecules there will be a delay in the epithelial healing based on the understanding we have several studies which then show us how the epithelial wound healing can be modified by using hyaluronic acid polymers in a eye where there is an epithelial injury we had several clinical and experimental models which show that the healing of an epithelial bre breakdown or epithelial defect will be enhanced and will be much more faster when you use hyaluronic acid in patients or in the uh, animals where there are epithelial damage has been created experimentally and the sodium hyaluronate as we know has uh, comes in different concentrations and in different molecular weights and how does that really affect the 
uh, epithelial healing and this has been studied experimentally and they found that the molecular weight does not really change the way the corneal epithelium heals however when you look at the concentration of hyaluronic acid about 0.1% concentration was probably better than a 0.01 or a 0.05% concentration so you need an optimal concentration of sodium hyaluronate uh, which will help the corneal healing process we also know that apart from the healing effects the sodium hyaluronate also prolongs the tear film stability and it might uh, prolong the uh, tear film stability for up to 3 to 4 hours following installation so what this really means is that for example as we mentioned the frictional loss or we mentioned the mechanical uh, sort of abrasion of the corneal epithelium because of the dry eye so if we have an agent which keeps the ocular surface moist and lubricated and healthy for about 3 to 4 hours following installation probably using the drops uh, four to five times a day during the waking hours might be a good option to prevent ocular surface injury when we look at some of the properties of sodium hyaluronate basically it's a sponge like structure which has a high affinity for water molecules so it's a sponge which holds the water together and it releases the water slowly from the sponge into the tear film so it's like a slow release mechanism which keeps moisturizing the tear film for maybe 4 hours or 3 hours following installation and this uh, moisturization uniformly spread, spreads across the ocular surface and helps to sort of maintain and preserve the ocular surface epithelium so by improving the tear film stability and maintaining the wettability of the surface it will and it also helps to improve epithelial healing due to its biologic properties so it has a sort of a protective effect by creating a healthy tear film for about a few hours following installation and then we have several clinical articles or clinical data which document the similar observations in clinical studies where they found that when you use sodium hyaluronate it improves the symptom scores and reduces the ocular surface staining in patients with various various forms of dry eye diseases including the sjogrens and the non sjogrens variety of dry eye and they these patients have done better than the placebo or in other studies with compared to other polymers that are available for dry eye so basically i think what we need to uh, understand is that when you use hyaluronic acid based tears you not only provide hydration to the ocular surface but you also provide a healing response to the ocular surface and we know that dry eye is basically revolving around the uh, tear film instability the tear film related problems which give rise to symptoms and the corneal epithelial breakdown which again give rise to pain and other symptoms of dry eye patients and therefore by improving the tear film stability and accelerating wound healing i think hyaluronic acid is a very good uh, polymer that will help our patients who have dry eye of course we need to address the other mechanisms as well so we definitely use anti inflammatory therapy maybe mild steroids maybe uh, topical cyclosporine when it comes to treating patients who have dry eye and we also need to look at neural regeneration we have data to say that when you use anti inflammatory therapy such as cyclosporine there is an improvement in the nerve fiber density and there is neural regeneration in uh, patients who are treated adequately uh, we can also say probably that if we treat uh, patients with a good tear substitute and help in promoting the epithelial healing probably it will also help to suppress the inflammatory responses that are often triggered by an epithelial breakdown we also need to look at toxic effects of uh, medications on the ocular surface and i think the most important factor here is the ocular surface health so whenever we have a patient where the ocular surface is unhealthy for example a patient who has dry eye all these uh, other factors become less important and these patients quickly develop ocular surface toxicity maybe because of let's say a benzalkonium chloride or an epitheliotoxic antibiotic or so on we know that patients who have good ocular surface health are often able to sustain long durations of treatment with multiple drops often with preservatives but a dry ocular surface has very poor tolerance to these medications which may be toxic 
and we need to eliminate these toxic medications from the ocular surface and replace them with more uh, friendly uh, polymers and artificial tear substitutes which have minimum preservative and at the end i would like to say that whenever we treat a dry eye patient i would like to see less and less of ocular surface staining uh, once i start treatment for the patient and i hope that uh, as science progresses we come to a situation where we probably don't see staining once we treat our patients well and that would be a great achievement for all of us thank you